In this video, I'll show you how the exegetical guide in Logos brings together your original language tools and resources, enabling you to investigate textual variants, do word-by-word -word analysis, visualize textual structures, and examine grammatical issues in your passage. Imagine you're studying the Thanksgiving section of Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, and you want to perform an in-depth analysis of the original Greek text. Begin by highlighting verses 2 through 5. Then, right-click to show the context menu and select Reference 1 Thessalonians 1, 2 through 5. Scroll the right-hand panel and click Exegetical Guide to generate the guide in the new tab. Each section of the guide contains important exegetical information. To make the guide easier to navigate, click any heading and choose Collapse All and then open each desired section when you're ready. The Textual Variants section gives quick access to apparatuses marking other readings, full original language editions, and more. Hovering over any resource shows a quick view of the variants, and clicking opens the full resource for studying. While there are no major disagreements in this text, note that there is some difference in where the manuscripts place the words of you in verse 2. We'll see this later in our study. Word by Word provides a Greek-English comparison of the text grouped by verse. Scroll through the words to view essential grammatical information, like the lexical form of the word, morphological and word sense data, and links to articles in various lexicons for quick access. To investigate the structure of this passage, let's start by examining only the verbs within the text. Open the word-by-word -word section settings, choose Include only these parts of speech, and select Verb. Viewing the verbs only brings out some important observations about the passage. First, notice that the verb give thanks is in the indicative mood. Since it starts the thanksgiving section of this epistle, we note this is the main verb of the sentence. As you scroll down to the additional verbs, you'll see they're all supporting participles, making, remembering, and knowing. Each one of these clauses explains how or why Paul gives thanks to God for the Thessalonians. He gives thanks by making mention of them in his prayers, because he remembers their work of faith, and because he knows that they've been chosen by God. To visualize the structure of this text, open the Visualization section and open the Lexem Syntactic Greek New Testament. This resource organizes the Greek in a graphical layout. Glancing at this structure, our original understanding of the passage is confirmed. The verb eucharistumen is supported by three participle clauses, making, remembering, and knowing. It's clear Paul has one central thought in mind, gratitude to God for the Thessalonians. The participle clauses then support this claim. Let's return to the exegetical guide to look at a few other sections. The grammatical construction section highlights important connections between words or phrases. Here we see verse 3 contains the Granville Sharp rule, indicating that the phrase God and Father describes one person who is both God and Father rather than two separate entities. These kinds of constructions have significant implications for interpretation, and the exegetical guide surfaces them for your study. Like the word-by-word -word section above, the Limit and Passage section focuses on specific words, but this time it collates thoughts from your library's commentaries and reference works. Expand Eucharisto to view resources in your library that directly address this lemma in context. Each entry is previewed, and here, Wanamaker discusses whether the phrase concerning all of you goes with give thanks or making mention. Opening the full entry reveals he believes it seems best to take it with Eucharistumen, give thanks, here, and then understand humon, or of you, with meneon poiumenoi, making mention, as this corresponds with 1 Corinthians 1.4. As we saw at the beginning, there are several manuscripts attesting to this reading. The final section I'll draw your attention to is called Important Passages. It's like an enhanced cross-reference section. It lists other passages that share common preaching themes, vocabulary, figurative language, cultural concepts, and more with your text. You can even specify a particular type of connection, like shared senses. The exegetical guide pulls together your original language tools and resources on any passage for you so you can focus on the actual work of exegeting the text. 